So arthroscopic treatment for the CMC joint, um, anyone, anytime someone's a candidate for a hemiresection of the trapezio metacarpal joint, you can think about arthroscopy. Eaton stage two, stage three, non, it's not pantrapezial arthritis and you don't burn any bridges. I was talking to some people yesterday. I think as I've gotten older, I've learned I, I don't like to burn bridges. And as people are younger and they show up with the problems that older people have, you got to be minimally invasive, do things less aggressively. Don't take out the whole trapezium in 45 year olds. I just think if you can do something differently um, at younger ages, I think it's better. Uh, you do have to treat the lateral subluxation um, of the thumb metacarpal base. Um, Arthroscopically, if they have bad skin, sometimes you don't want to do it arthroscopically. Here's some of the portals, the 1R, 1U, uh, the D2 portal, which is the dorsal distal portal. That will help you come at a more steep angle so that you can get the ulnar side of the uh, uh, trapezium debrided. So that's the D2 portal. It's kind of in that V between first and second metacarpals, just distal to the uh, inner uh, metacarpal ligament. So um, you can see the burr aggressively taking away about three millimeters of the trapezium. Um, this is me doing arthroscopy on the CMC joint. Um, you can debride it. You can shrink the capsule. Um, you can shrink some of the ligaments. Um, you got to keep the probe away from cartilage. You need outflow, inflow, just to maintain that uh, uh, the temperature uh, within the joint. So here's a thermal wand shrinking uh, the volar beak ligament, some of the volar capsule ligamentous structures. Um, and, you know, in, in patients that have that initial instability, grade one, grade two, um, this really does help. Um, you can do an arthroscopic uh, partial trapeziectomy with interposition, uh, partial trapeziectomy without tendon interposition, use shrinkage, pinning, like I, I think you guys heard from me yesterday. I try to not pin very often nowadays. I just don't like the complications of pins. Um, you can salvage it at any time. There's a ton of studies supporting what I do. Um, arthroscopic hemitrapeziectomy and interposition. Gore-Tex wasn't good in, in Menon study. Berger, Culp, um, they showed less subsidence uh, with uh, hemitrapeziectomy arthroscopically. Adams, completely satisfied, partially satisfied, Badia, um, high satisfaction rate, and others. Shorter recovery. Um, so here's the setup. Again, 1R, 1U. Um, you can do a Thenar portal. The Thenar portal is, is about 90 degrees um, from the 1U portal, and you stick it straight through the Thenar musculature. And then you can get in there and visualize. visualize. Again, and the D2 is coming down this way at a steeper angle. Um, so those, and then there's the volar radial portal, just radial to the FCR tendon. So with nanoscope, you will definitely be able to establish these portals easier and more safely. Um, these are just a ton of schematics as I was just preparing this talk, anatomically seeing where the portals are. Um, again, the 1R, 1U, and the D2 dorsal distal portal. Um, again, you can do synovectomy, debridement, remove loose bodies, do the hemitrapeziectomy with the burr, use fluoro guidance if needed. Thermal shrinkage is helpful. You got to be very, you know, be diligent about debriding the volar, uh, synovitis, and synovium, and find that beak ligament. Uh, you restore stability by thermal shrinkage. It's the fibroplasia and scarring, and some sensory receptors are are uh, destroyed, so therefore decreasing the pain. Again, I'll just cast them before I pin them because I think that that stability will occur with some immobilization and as that capsule tightens up and those ligaments tighten up. Here's fluoro guidance. You can, you can look under fluoro to make sure that you've uh, removed enough. This is, a, a, as I've mentioned, I like to do the scope and bring in a little arthroflex, an aflex patch. It's technically a little challenging, but as you can see in the middle, the middle, I kind of ball it up into like a little arrow um, and then I stuff it in. Um, and then what I'll do is after I know that I've gotten it in and popped it in, I may put a freer elevator through that portal, make sure it's in there, and then I'll kind of spread it out with a freer or a probe. So in my younger patients, this is a teacher, 40-year-old teacher, thumb arthritis, post-traumatic. Um, and, and so this really, I mean, she's done very well. And, you know, you can get them back to doing things pretty quickly. I think, I think Nanoscope's going to make this really easy. So, um, you know, there's, there's your complication of pins and stuff. I, I, I hate pins. Um, suture button suspension. Some people um, are doing a hemitrapeziectomy with suture button. I don't have a lot of experience with it. I do, I do love the tightrope. I use the tightrope, a double tightrope probably in my revision cases. 
um, protocol after suspension, or really what I'm doing with the interposition with an AFLEX thumb spike a splint for a few days, uh, suture removal, and start range of motion very quickly. Um, and, and they advance, I think, more quickly than our typical open procedures.